Okay, in this problem, we're asked to determine the critical points of F, show that they are non-degenerate, calculate the number of negative eigenvalues of our Hessian matrix, and use Morse lemma to write F after a change of uh, coordinates as F composed of U, or phi of U, is equal to F of P minus U sub 1 squared minus dot 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 minus U sub I squared plus u sub i plus 1 squared plus dot 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 plus u sub n squared. Um, and in this case, we'll just be 3 since we have, um, we're going to have 3 eigenvalues. And the neg number of negative values in Morse in this equation will be the number of negative eigenvalues. And we're given that our function f of x, y, z is equal to x cubed plus y cubed plus z cubed minus 3x minus 12y minus 27z. Okay, so first we're going to want to calculate where our critical points are. So so we'll calculate the gradient vector of f. Partial derivative of f with respect to x is 3x squared minus 3, partial derivative of f with respect to y, is 3y squared minus 12, and the partial derivative of f with respect to z is 3z squared minus 27. So we want to determine the points where our gradient vector is equal to zero. So we'll set each component equal to zero. So we get the first component is 3x squared minus 3 equals zero. We'll just go ahead and write this right away as 3x squared equals 3. So we see that x squared equals 1. Or x is equal to plus or minus 1. Similarly, we'll solve for setting the second component equal to 0. I just skipped the, set of, the step of setting it equal to 0 and bringing the 12 over to the other side. So we have 3y squared equals 12. Solving for y, we get y squared is equal to 4, and y is equal to plus or minus 2. And again, we'll set the third component equal to 0, and then bring the 27 over to the other side. We get 3z squared is equal to 27. or z squared is equal to 9, which tells us that z is equal to plus or minus 3. Okay, so these are all of the points where we obtain critical points. Um, I'll just count them really quick because it's, an, it's pretty quick. So there are two different choices for the x component, plus or minus 1. So we have 2 times the number of possibilities for the y component, which is 2 again, plus or minus 2 times the number of possibilities for the z component, which is plus or minus 3, is 2. So we have eight different critical points um, for our function f, which is a lot, but uh, we can do this. So um, we want to calculate the number of, so we now want to show that they are non-degenerate. So let's get our Hessian matrix. So we know that the Hessian matrix is given as our partial derivative of f with respect to x, or the f sub x, x is our first component, and f sub y, y is 
So along the diagonal, we're going to have f sub x, x, f sub y, y, and f sub z, z. And then it'll be a symmetric matrix. So we have f sub x, x, f of x, y, f of x, z on the first row. So we'll go ahead and calculate that. So we have essentially just the gradient vector of our first component as the first row. So for the gradient of f, we have six x zero zero is our first row. And for our second component, the gradient vector of that is zero six y zero. And the gradient of our third component is six zero zero six z. So this is our Hessian matrix. Um, it's really easy to take the determinant since it's a diagonal matrix. It's just we just multiply the diagonal entries. So The determinant of our Hessian matrix is equal to the determinant of this matrix, which is equal to just multiplying down the diagonal, which is 6 to the third times x, y, z. So the determinant will equal 0 only if one of the three components, x, y, or z, is equal to 0. But we see that at our critical points, None of them are equal to zero. None of our components will ever be equal to zero. So we know that our determinant is not equal to zero. So we know that all of our critical points are non-degenerate. OK, so now we want to calculate the number of negative eigenvalues um, at each critical point. So I'll just write down. Our critical points are when x is equal to plus or minus 1, y equals plus or minus 2, z is plus or minus 3. So um, again, the because we have a diagonal matrix, it's going to make calculating the eigenvalues a lot easier. So we know that the eigenvalues are when we want to calculate the determinant of the Hessian matrix minus lambda i is equal to 0. So Hessian matrix minus lambda i. We're going to just subtract lambda along the diagonal. So again, we'll have a diagonal matrix. So we have the determinant of a diagonal matrix. So we have 6x minus lambda times 6y minus lambda times 6z minus lambda equals 0. So that's going to occur when lambda is precisely 6x, 6y, or 6z. So we know that um, our eigenvalues are going to be, so if we have x as plus 1, we'll have lambda is equal to 6, solves it. So, or for that matter, when any one of our components, x, y, and z, are positive, we'll have a positive 
eigenvalue since our eigenvalues are simply the values along the diagonal and uh, that the values along our diagonal of our Hessian matrix. So that means that also when our components are negative, then our eigenvalues are going to be negative. So, so we'll just remember that um, if our component is negative, then we have another negative eigenvalue. So let's go ahead and write all of these points. with that new knowledge. So we have so I'll just write them as um, the right hand side of our equation but you can fill in the left hand side. So our first point we'll let all of our components be positive. So we have one, two, three. So I'm going to write out, I just wrote out all of the points quick. So we have 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, negative 3, 1, negative 2, 3, 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 1, 2, 3, negative 1, 2, negative 3, negative 1, negative 2, 3, and negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. So let's count them quick and make sure that we have 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So we have our eight points, our eight critical points, and with our knowledge that if any one of them is negative, we have an ex another negative eigenvalue. So we can just count the number of negatives, negative eigenvalues, and that will tell us how many negative signs we need. So the first term, they're all positive. So So we have all positive plus signs. Second equation, we have one negative component. So there will be a minus u1 squared. So we have minus u1 squared plus u2 squared plus u3 squared, since we have two positive and one negative components. And again, We have minus u1 squared plus u2 squared plus u3 squared. And in this equation, we have two negative components. So we have negative u1 squared minus u2 squared plus u3 squared. And in this equation, we have one negative component. So we have, again, negative u1 squared plus u2 squared plus u3 squared. And we have two negative components. So we have a negative u1 squared minus u2 squared plus u3 squared. And Again, we have two, now we have two negative components, so negative u1 squared minus u2 squared plus u3 squared. And finally, we have three negative components, so all of our terms will be negative. So we have eight equations given to us by Morse lemma uh, of our function 
at the critical points, shifted uh, after a change of variable, and we determined how many negative signs and positive signs based off of our eigenvalues, and that's the final result.